Paul Johnson, welcome to My Soul on our second birthday. Thank you very much for coming down. Thank you. I had to be here. Uh, you've been supporting my record so much better than this that just had to show up and just give my thanks. Talking about the record, since you mentioned it, because I was going to wait a little bit, <laughs> as, as you brought it up, how did it all come about? Well, um, I don't know if you know, but I, I haven't recorded anything for, for many years. Um, after having a career with CBS Records, uh, I, many years ago, many moons ago, I worked with them people and other artists and Misha Paris and Juliet Roberts and so to so. And then I got into management and I managed um, Shauna Scoffrey okay. for uh, quite a few years. I got him his deal and we put out some really nice tracks. Didn't go as big as I would have liked because I think he's actually quite phenomenal. Um, and so I kind of got a little bit discouraged about doing the management thing because uh, to me that should have really, really happened big. I thought I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something was, that was less about entertainment and the business and about helping people. So I joined a college to do a course and the course became something that I really enjoyed. It was counseling and then I was asked to teach the counseling course and then I went and got some more qualifications and then I became a full-time teacher. And then I had some ideas about how we should be supporting our young people in education and then I became a director. So I've been a director in uh, an FE college for learner services. And I sort of forgot about the love and the passion about the singing because I was very much into being this person in this college that does a particular kind of work. And it was my um, old sort of principal who kind of reminded me, but you used to sing and you used to... And most of all, the young people began to remind me that I used to sing. I had students coming up to me and saying, like, Sir, were you on top of the pops? Because they'd gone into, like, YouTube. And so when you think that people have forgotten you and that, you know, things have been forgotten... YouTube brings all that. YouTube and then Facebook and, and everything else, all these different sort of media. Um, and so um, last, last year, I was in my home. I had thought, I'll try and do a few things for fun. And I decided to just um, have a go at writing a track. And I came up with this tune amongst a couple of others called Better Than This. And I gave it to my friend, uh, uh, Dean Ricketts from the Watchman Agency. He's been a real cool friend of mine for many years. And he loved it. I said, well, if you love it, just put it out. I don't care about the deal. I don't care about, just put the record out. And uh, a year later, he put it out uh, on expansions and uh, the love and the love and the love has just been out there and it's come back. And the love also is epitomized by uh, the mixes that lots of different people did. But there's been some great mixes. But Frankie Knuckles, who I just, you know, spoke to on, 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 F, on FB on Facebook, um, <laughs> You know, he, he was asking, you know, what are you up to? And I said, well, you know, education to do it. But I've just done this little track here. I don't know. Send it to me. Let me hear it. I sent it to him. He liked it. Did the mix. No business, no deal, whatever. Just said he loved it, did it, and gave it back to me. And uh, the, the night before he died, I sent him an email to say, you know, is the deal or okay? Is everything all right? And um, the next morning I heard he had passed. But he did that mix in love. And I've had so much love from people who I didn't think would even remember that um, I was around or that I did things how many years ago. And it's been powerful and, and thought provoking. And I'm just really delighted with the response. It's quite, you were quite fortunate in a way because you, you like, like you said, you contacted Frank and Knuckles on Facebook, social media, and, and you, you, you virtually got perhaps the last. Frankie Knuckles mix possibly never be made possibly possibly uh, yeah. how does that make you feel though how did it make you feel when you heard about the whole Frankie Knuckles thing well I, I was I was gutted when I of course when I heard that he had passed and um, I'm assuming you knew him before yeah I had met him uh, years previously with uh, Dave Morales who had done a mix for me when I was with on CBS records and I met him in New York uh, when I was singing background vocals for Shira Nelson. She did like a kind of showcase there. And that's where I met Frankie. And I met him again in Ibiza, coming back from Ibiza to London at the airport when I was with Sean. So that was about 15 years ago. So 
Hey, we, we, we don't know what these things mean other than uh, I know that uh, this track was born out of just love. It is about love. It is about what that does for you. And it's very much about, you know, that whole engagement. And I feel that with Frankie, he gave me something that was pure. He didn't ask for money. He did it because he, he liked it. He heard something he liked and he responded. And all I've had throughout this last year has been that positive response. And I'm here today because of that response to what I do and who I am. And I'm just very grateful. And I just want to keep giving that back. So there is a there is going to be some follow up tracks from yourself oh. to this this amazing track you brought out. Well, I hope there will be. Uh, I'm not planning anything, but you know there's some things there and something might happen. It's organic. It's what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't plan to put this out. It, it, it's it's nice not to have to put something out. You know, it's not the old days when it's a recording deal. You got to kind of what's the follow up. It's about doing what you feel doing you know being responsive to the mood to the time and you know this track i wrote this track a year ago and i wish it came out then but something there's something in the air that said no it's going to come out this year so there's certain things that i'm not in control of and it's about having what you can have and letting go of what you can't and so when the mood is right there'll be another song there might be an album there may not be but i know that what happened this year you know, I can't, I can't top that. It's, it's what it is, and I'm just very grateful for it. Did you get to a stage where you'd missed the music industry and you wanted to get back into it? I don't miss the music industry. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, the music is industry that I would have known, it's, I don't recognise it at all. It's, it's changed ever so much. I think um, there's something that I didn't think I missed, but I know that I do, is the, is the again, it's the engagement, it's the performance. I'm very much a live performer. You know, um, I was very pri privileged to work with Junior Giskin. Um, I demanded that he produced my uh, first album because he was someone that I, I, I have so admired in terms of his career and what he stood for back in the 80s. That's the time I thought, you know, if I'm going to sing. That's and um, I was very fortunate that I could get him to do not just my demos, but also to do my first and uh, part of my second album. But working in the, in the studio is, is one craft, which I totally enjoy. But doing it live is sensational <laughs> because it's about that connectivity with people. You know, it's about, you know, telling that story that somebody connects with. It's about, you know, doing that note that moves people into a particular place. It's about working with people in, a, in you know, that team effort, the band, the backing singers. And, and I didn't think that I would miss that. I was so you know, happy to say, sure, you go and you do it, and everybody else did. But I forgot how wonderful that was an experience for me. And I've done a couple of little shows um, over the last 12 months that have really brought back that feeling. And also, to be honest, quite honest with you, I didn't even think that I could hit those notes anymore. I thought that that time had gone yeah. uh, and it's it's nice to rediscover your voice and rediscover the things that you've learned how many years ago and yeah so it's it's not the industry that I miss it's the um, opportunity to um, to get people to pause reflect sing shout scream you know get involved get happy yeah I like I like that so with that in mind then, with all the bits that you do like, will we get to see you perform live again? I would love to play live. Um, I'd love to play somewhere like The Hideaway, which is like more like, because I'm, I'm, I'm from the South, South London. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I'd love to play The Hideaway. I, I wouldn't say no to Jazz Cafe, but I don't know yet how many people really want to come and see that show. But if the opportunity was there, I'd love to do something like that. Of course I would. Paul Johnson, thank you very much for coming in and seeing us on our birthday. Thank you. It's been happy absolute... birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy Paul. birthday. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks very much. See, this is a real pleasure. I listened to your soul spectrum for years. And you were one of the people, as well as a guy called Frankie Crocker.